things that join us. Over a thousand pastors. Every major labor union has joined in this quest for voting rights. But I want to thank every partner who made it today for the Peace Walk and all the organizers of the Peace Walk who understood the importance not just of the day, but of this moment. And thank you to all of you who are joining us here today, and especially you as members of the American media helping to get the word out to American people. My mother always said uh, a holiday should be a day on, not a day off. Today we're not here to celebrate. We're here to be on. We're here to call on President Biden and the Senate to pass the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act and to warn that our democracy stands on the brink of serious trouble without these bills. Last week the President said he's tired of being quiet about voting rights. Well, we're tired of being patient. Since January 6, 2021, when the insurrectionists attacked our capital, 19 legislatures have passed 34 laws clawing back voting rights for their citizens. States like my home state, where new laws, I should say of Georgia, are designed to confuse voters so they don't know where to go. They kick people off the voter rolls so they show up to vote and find out they're not registered. They close polling stations and limit voting hours so working parents and folks without access to transportation can't get there in town. These laws are being passed with knife-like precision to cut black and brown voters out of the process. And they're exactly what the Voting Rights Act wants protected against. That's just one state, but it's all over. Texas, Florida, Iowa, Arizona, the list goes on. More legislatures are gearing up to pass laws like these when they convene this year. And our Senate is letting them get away with it because of a little technicality called the filibuster. With the filibuster, a single senator can prevent a bill from coming up for debate just by sending an email. They can stop a bill from being debated, let alone voted on. This is why people say the Senate is broken, but it gets worse. The filibuster was used to stop civil rights legislation for a hundred years after the Civil War. Now think about that. The history books tell you that after the Civil War, people who had been enslaved for 250 years were finally free. But that's not the truth. They had to fight for a hundred more years before they could overcome the filibuster just to have their right to vote protected. And now the filibuster is being weaponized again. The irony is that all these laws take, taking away our rights are being passed by a simple majority. While here in Washington, the effort to reinstate them has to get a super majority to pass. The good news is that we have the power to address the injustices. We can eliminate the filibuster with a simple majority and then pass this bill that every Democratic senator says they support. But as you've heard, a few people stand in the way. Not just Republicans, Every one of them has taken an immoral position against voting rights. But that's not who I want to talk about today. I'm talking about two Democratic senators, Senator Joe Manchin and Senator Christian Sinema, who say they support the bill, but refuse to eliminate the filibuster to pass it. They think the real problem isn't that our rights are being stolen. They think the real problem is a disease of division that can be cured with some optimism in conversation. Now, my father worked to bring people together in his town, but he was no Pollyanna. In his speech, The Other America, he talked about how some people were pushing back on civil rights because like these two senators, they felt the problem couldn't be solved with legislation. They told him he had to change hearts first, and he worked hard at that. After all, he was a Baptist preacher. 
But he knew that when someone is denying you of your fundamental rights, conversation and optimism won't get you very far. He said, although it may be true that morality can't be legislated, behavior can be regulated. Even though it might be true, he said, that the law cannot change the heart, it can restrain the heartless. Even though it may be true that the law cannot make a man love me, it can restrain him from lynching me. So let me be clear, when states are engaging in lawless voter suppression, only the law can stop them. Senator Sinema and Manchin also say, if, they, if the bill doesn't get bipartisan support, it shouldn't pass. Well, the 14th Amendment, which granted citizenship to slaves in 1868, that didn't have bipartisan support. Should formerly enslaved people have been denied citizenship, Senator Sinema? The 15th Amendment that gave formerly enslaved people the right to vote in 1870, that didn't have bipartisan support. Should former slaves have been denied the right to vote, Senator Manchin? In 1922, 23, and 24, some senators filibusted an anti-lynching bill that had passed in the House. Would Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema have supported blocking those bills too? I'm just applying their logic here and showing that it's not logical at all. To them, the filibuster is sacred, except for when it's not. In 2010, Senator Sinema supported the idea of using reconciliation to get around the filibuster and pass health care reform. Just last month, they both supported an exception to the filibuster to raise the debt ceiling, but they draw the line at protecting the rights of millions of voters. History will not remember them kindly. In April 1963, my father was jailed in Birmingham for protesting segregation. While there, he wrote an open letter in which he said the biggest stumbling block was not the Ku Klux Klan, but the white monarch who is more devoted to order than justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your methods or direct, of direct action, who paternalistically feels he can set the timetable for another man's freedom. He was surrounded by people who told him to wait until a more convenient time and to use more agreeable methods. 59 years later, it's the same old song and dance from Senator Manchin and Summer. But my father did not let up for a moment, and neither have we. More than 180 partners, over 1,000 faith leaders, and millions nationwide fought to make this vote possible. You are the reason President Biden spoke out last week and is swinging for the fences. You are the reason Speaker Pelosi has brought about powerful legislation and every procedural solution possible to protect black and brown Americans. You are the reason Leader Schumer set a deadline and is bringing the bill to a vote tomorrow. Organizing works, protesting works, and we cannot let up now. So no matter what happens tomorrow, we must keep the pressure on and say no more empty words. Don't tell us what you believe in. Show us with your votes. History will be watching what happens tomorrow. Black and brown Americans will be watching what happens tomorrow. In 50 years, students will read about what happens tomorrow and know whether our leaders had the integrity to do the right thing. Mr. President, Senator, Senator Manchin, Senator Sinema, members of the Senate, pass the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act now. If you can deliver an infrastructure bill for bridges, you can deliver voting rights for Americans. If you do not, there is no bridge in this nation that can hold the weight of that failure.